Grand Theft Auto V took 3 years and $265 million to make, and today my dumbass is going to try and recreate it in 24 hours with a $300 budget. So let's see how far I get. Now the first thing I needed was an open level, and somehow I managed to find this amazing 200 acre map, and it was completely free. And despite my GTX 3080 getting 40 FPS on this map, I just had to go with it, it was too good. The map had a lot of things that I needed, uh, the key one being it has roads, which is important because I'm adding vehicles to the game, and it also has footpaths, which is really important because I need to code civilians that are going to like walk around the map. Next I needed a character. The advanced locomotion system was free, and despite being difficult to use, it provided so much functionality I couldn't pass it up. You get weapon animations, mantling, foot IK, ragdolling, and so many other features that I just had to have this pack. Next I dropped $100 on modern mail pack. I want to make a customizable character, so I need modular body pieces. I started by adding them all to the existing blueprint logic, and then I synced them all up using a feature of Unreal Engine called the Master Pose Component. I wanted to get the UI done as fast as possible, so I googled the GTA font, I made a quick demo UI, and then added some black outline to complete the look. A single blueprint node then adds the UI to the screen. Alright, so now I just simply switch the level, I'm going to change the gun models to some custom ones from the FPS weapon bundle, and we're looking pretty damn good. I didn't like the default menu from the locomotion system, so I ripped this radial menu out of the smart ping system plugin and then I turned it into a weapon wheel so that it's more like GTA. With vehicles being such a huge part of the game, I decided to tackle these next. Vehicle variety pack was free and I had lots of different vehicles so I used that. I use an invisible sphere to track whether the player is near the car, and then pressing E controls the car. When you control the car, we simply make your character invisible, and then spawn him back next to the car when you want to get out. Guys, you know your boy is poor, so I gotta shout out my course. We teach you in 40 videos how to code games in C++ with Unreal Engine, and at the end of it, you have a game you can literally play on Steam with your friends. What is cooler than that? We make vehicles, weapons, an inventory system, an equipment system, and loads of other stuff in there as well. So if you're interested, you can grab that for $25 over on my Patreon. Thank you very much. Back to the video. I gotta admit, things were going way too well. My first road bump came in the form of AI. Just getting civilians walking around the level turned out to be really tricky. I decided to create a network of nodes that the AI would follow. Each node can lead to any number of other nodes. When you see a fork in the road, the AI will randomly choose one of the nodes to go to. This happened to solve my issue of keeping the AI on the footpaths because by default the AI will just choose the shortest path, so they'll end up walking through foliage and bushes and it looks ridiculous. I added a little bit of randomization by mapping a random number to a random clothing piece. Super basic, but it ended up working pretty well. Another huge problem is that with the 200 acre world, generating navigation for the entire world is way too slow. So we optimize this by only generating navigation around the actual character itself. And of course it wouldn't be GTA if you couldn't run people over with your car, so you know I had to code that in as well. I added some very simple firing logic that deals damage to whatever you hit. I also created the particle systems myself so I was able to save some money. Now I needed NPCs to support the damage system and also run away when you shoot at them. I wrote some blueprint code that figures out the opposite direction from the player and then generates a random location to flee to. Here is the logic with debugging to show how it works. 
Civilians should drop cash when killed. So I whipped up pickups for both cash and also ammo. An invisible sphere will add to the player's money or spare ammo variable when overlapped. Now I simply hook up the NPCs to drop a random amount of cash when killed. Missions were going to be one of the hardest parts of the project. In GTA, the player usually receives missions by either cutscene or by a phone call. Since I didn't have time to create cutscenes, I decided quests would be given and updated using phone calls instead. To make my phone system, I took the best looking smartphone I could find, and then I added some basic script to make it animate, play audio, and display the caller. Hey, what's up, man? Um... Look, you remember the other day when we were hanging out in my driveway and you dropped your phone? Um, I didn't realize, but you left like a giant crater in the ground, like you've completely destroyed my driveway, so please hit me back as soon as possible, dude. Without a map, the player has no idea where their objective is, so I had to do the map before I could get to the quests. I started by taking a super high resolution screenshot of the map from a bird's eye view. I then grayscaled the map in Photoshop to make it look a little bit more like GTA. To pan the map around, we take the player's offset from the center of the map, divide it by the size of the map, and then multiply that by the dimensions of the map screenshot. This gives us the map's offset. Next, I add a map icon so I can make objective markers for the quest. These tell the player where to go. I also added health and special meter bars, but I haven't hooked those up yet. With the phone and minimap systems complete, I can now finally get to the quests. I decided to use my narrative quest plugin to create missions in the game. Basically you design the mission and then the plugin just handles the rest of the logic. My first quest would be really basic. Big Smoke is going to call you on the phone and he's going to ask you to get him a package. You then find it and then deliver it to his door. The grey nodes are states in the quest, and the orange nodes represent actions that move you through the quest. Reaching the green node means that you succeeded the quest. Let's start our quest. Big Smoke calls you, and once the call ends, the Begin Quest node tells Narrative to start the quest. I created a new pickup for the package that tells Narrative you've taken the package when you walk over it. This lets Narrative know you've completed this step and to update the quest. I used another basic trigger sphere that again tells narrative when you deliver the package to Big Smoke's house. So with all that done, we're ready to try the quest out. I'm going to spawn into the map. Big Smoke is queued up to call us, which begins the quest. The level blueprint has a bit of logic to add and remove quest markers, so it adds a marker that tracks the package. The package actor queues up the next phone call from Big Smoke when you take it. Finally, the invisible sphere at Big Smoke's doorstep tells narrative that you've completed this step. It then completes the quest, and queues up one last phone call from Big Smoke. Thank you once again, homeboy, for retrieving the package for me. Yours truly, Big Smoke. So now at this point I only had 10 hours left and I had one final goal which is to do a mission with some combat and maybe even a sidekick to help you if I had time for that as well. So this meant that my dumbass wandering AI needed to get a little bit smarter. I realized I screwed up when I started writing a separate weapon system for the AI because I realized the AI and the player could actually just share the same weapon system. So I refactored it all and added a new base class and then I have the AI and the player share that same base class so that they can share the weapon system and the health system and stuff like that. For enemy AI, I wrote a new behavior tree that includes the same wandering behavior, but with some added combat logic on top. 
And instead of fleeing the player when shot at, if the AI has a weapon, they will begin firing and update their rotation to face you as they fire. This approach works just fine, but the AI has no concept of losing sight of you, so he'll just stand there shooting even if you run behind a wall. To fix this, I added an AI perception component to the AI. So this is a really handy component, it's configured with whatever sensors you want, and I decided to add sight and hearing sensors to it, and then I binded an event that fires when the AI perceives something. At this point, the AI has a target, and then the firing logic can begin. If the AI loses track of you, he will walk to your last known location, and if he still can't find you, he'll just go back to patrolling around. So now that the player can be killed by the AI, I added the classic wasted screen, and I also changed the time dilation so that the player falls in slow motion. Since I needed to code a partner to help you kill some rival goons in the final mission, I decided to whip one up. I was super intimidated by this and I thought it would be really hard, but in the end all I had to do was copy the logic from the enemies. The only difference is your partner looks for enemies to shoot instead of where the enemies look for your player to shoot. This meant that coding the partner actually turned out to be really easy. The only major difference was that I added a new behavior tree to make the partner follow your player around. So the final quest involves you and your buddy basically getting into a big shoot up with a rival gang and then stealing some weapons from them. But with just three hours left I was about to encounter one of the biggest challenges that I'd encountered yet. So the only thing left to do was code the final mission. I again used narrative to whip up the quest with the quest containing five steps. Pick dynamic up from his house, drive him to the rival gang house, kill the two rival gang members, find your gang's stolen weapons, and then finally drive Dynamic back to his house. Dynamic has code to say different lines of dialogue as you advance through the quest. You receive the quest via phone call, which again has code to start the quest after the call ends. Dynamic is coded to walk to the car when you get within range, and once within range, he gets in. The gang house has a sphere to check when you've reached it. Alright, we're here. The house is just over the bridge. Let's go get these fools. And then the two enemies have code in them that tells the narrative quest tool when they are killed, and that updates the quest and the UI. Yeah, we showed them. Alright, let's find those weapons and get out of here. Same goes for the weapons. When you pick them up, a simple sphere checks for when you take them. Yeah, we got the weapons. Could, could you please give me a ride home? I, I don't actually have a car, so if you could do that, that'd be, be real good. And then another sphere for when you return Dynamic to his house. And that's basically how the quest works. Hey yo, thanks once again, homie. We showed those fools. And with that, we reached the end of my voice acting career. And you know that I had to make a credit screen too, and shout out all the Patreons in there. And so with 24 hours all used up, mountains of spaghetti code, and a whole bunch of marketplace assets, the question needs to be asked, did we actually succeed in making Grand Theft Auto 5? Absolutely not.